remember we made a picture of the development of the animals in relation to the development of the human being. And we could see that we, in the development of all the animals, you have these sheaths. So, in the, in the fish, you have eggs. And this is still in the water. And when they come on the land, then this becomes hard. So you have to have the water inside. So you have the um, amnion sac, you have the yolk sac and the amnion, and you also have the alien twas. So also you have the reptile here. And then you begin to have the mammal. And now the mammal stays within the mother, and you have another sheath, which here is the world, and now you have a small world inside in the placenta. And we said that some, with some animals, it's a very short time until sexual reproduction and the adult phase. And the difference with the human being is there's a whole 21 years from birth until 21 years old that there has to be other sheaths protecting and informing the development of the child. Because the, the evolution always has to do with, an, with what's external becoming internalized. So if we look at this 21 years again, here we have birth. Let's say here we've had the nine months of embryological development. Yeah? So from conception to birth. Then we have a 21 year period that has three large periods in it, three large phases. And then what I want to show you is this process has to do with um, a finishing, a coming to a certain completion, and then a liberation of each of our bodies. So, birth, birth of the human being happens when the rhythmic system is developed enough to be able to operate on its own. So, at birth, the physical body is all there, but it all can't be used yet. It, all the all the organs are there, ready to work, but they're not finished yet. The nerve sense system is already the most developed. The senses are developed and ready to work. They're even working inside the womb. The child is hearing, the child is seeing, the child is even tasting, the child is touching. The mother can feel this. But just before the birth, the lungs, are not ready to breathe. Only when they're ready to breathe can birth happen. And that's actually what happens. The child comes out. The child needs to come out now and use the lung. But the metabolic limb system is still very undeveloped. All the parts are there, but they need now to develop. So they need sheaths to protect them. The human being cannot <coughs> It's not able to live on its own without <coughs> further sheath. So the first sheath, and this sheath will carry the child all the way to 21, is the family. Now the principle we've seen in development ever since the beginning of the male and the female uh, germ meeting which is a view of anthroposophy, but not of modern science. Modern science thinks that the whole reason and force and impulse for the development is there in the cell, in the original cells, in the DNA, and the chromosomes of the cell. Everything is written there, and everything develops from there out. 
Rudolf Steiner says, no, in the seed, it's the essence of the seed is ex it's exactly chaos. Nothing is formed. All that will be formed is still outside in the environment, actually out in the great environment of the cosmos, of even the stars and the planets and the life around the earth. The ego, the soul spirit lives in this environment and has to slowly come shine within a form that it builds. And we saw this in the development of the zygote. It doesn't, the development doesn't start with the human body. The development starts with the, with the sheaths with inside the mother, the cell, the, the um, first living cell, first has to develop the sheaths, and then from them the body begins to be developed, be formed and sculpted. So Rudolf Steiner says, and this is still true for the soul spirit of the young child, it's not really in the body. The soul spirit of the child is in the environment, is in the family, is in the beings around the child. So here the physical body is born. So now, in this whole beginning seven year period, the etheric body must be born. What do we mean born? The physical body can be born when all of its differentiated organs are there, ready to work. You know, we talked about the seven life processes last time. Breathing, warming, nurturing, secreting, maintaining, growing, and generating, reproducing. Now you can see the newborn child can breathe, but they can't warm themselves, they can't nurture themselves, they don't know how to secrete properly. And really, the, these processes of maintaining, growing, and generating, this will happen at puberty. So these are, and there will be growth all throughout, but all of this still needs to happen, needs to be established and born, just like the physical body is here, for the life body here. So by seven, just like at birth, the physical body now is there in all of its uh, differentiation and its organs. By seven, the child must be able to control its own life processes. Now the child has to know how to dress itself, how to feed itself, how to you, uh, do all the functions of secretion itself and it's beginning to take control of its own processes. So this is a gradual process from birth, and it happens itself in three phases. So there are very important uh, developments that have to happen by three, and then again by five, until this whole process, until the life body is really born and free to now give itself to the soul process. And here, another sheath can then be operative. Of course, there's a preschool that can begin to happen here. And then, here at, around, at puberty and sexual reproduction, there's another sheath. And this is the culture and the people around. Of, of, yeah, I put encounter of others. Here, the school, you have the family, and this can be a small family, mother, father, brothers, and sisters, or in many cultures, a much larger family, grandparents, uncles, aunts. And here, you have the teachers. And here, between, you have the doctor. And these are, in a way, <laughs> fixed people who have a real responsibility for bringing what's in the sheath, helping the child internalize these processes. And here, many relationships are established with other students, with people that are met, with people in the, in the culture and the society around. Then these encounters with people in your destiny who come outside or are not part of your original family or teachers, these are very important events for the child. 
So when the, when the child around seven, these aren't, these aren't specific ages. Every child is a little different. But, and as the child gets older, everything becomes more and more individual. Now here, for a child to be healthy, around two and a half to three years old, they have to have certain events happen in their body and in their souls. Whereas here, this is much, much freer. Some children have go right from school to university, or some children go traveling, or all kinds of things can happen to the individual. So the more you go back here, the more it gets generic for everyone, and here it gets more individual. And when, these, when the child can control its own life processes, right down into all of its um, bodily coordination, now, one of the things we look at in the Waldorf school, whether the child is ready to go from kindergarten to the first grade, is can they hop on one foot without, can they control their balances? And now, we have a whole process of the astral body being born. We saw how day after day after day, the child is preparing for the physical body to be born. It's also this gradual process. And now around this time, the, a whole series of events, and inner and outer, will happen for the child so that the astral body, the feeling life, the emotional life, can develop and in a way they can control it or begin to control it at this time. So another way to say it's born is it means now these forces, which are the etheric forces which have built the body here and now perform all the bodily functions, they are now free that these forces can work to form a, a healthy, proper astral body. And these forces, by this age, are free then so to well, put eye body, okay, or the eye organization. So there are three periods, again, where step by step this body is free so that those forces are there now for the eye to really develop within the young person, within the youth, so that at 21 the person is healthy and free to, to now follow their destiny. And we see this gradual development also taking place in a particular phased rhythm. So if here we have head and chest, let's see, and here we have the limbs with L. Yeah? So the threefold human being, nerve sense system, rhythmic system, metabolic limb system. So here we have the life body is freed in the head, really, in the nerve sense system. It's born and free. Here, then, from th three on, in the chest. And here now, the child has full use of their limbs. And now, in school, especially, the process starts again. Here, the astral body is first freed in the head. Now, and then in the rhythmic system, in the chest. And then in the limbs, at puberty. And now the ego is free in the head, it becomes born in the head, and then in the chest region, and finally in the will, in the limbs. Now with the, with the arms and the legs the child goes into the world and the child becomes an adult and follows their own destiny. So over the next few days we'll try to understand this whole process. What's happening in the child's body, or the young person, or the youth? What, what kind of behavior? How does the child act? How does the child relate to the world around him? What is the child's consciousness like? What is the child, what is the child itself going through? Can we understand what, what we can't see, but is there within the child? The child's consciousness is evolving from the, from the little tiny baby all the way to the young person at university there's a conscious change, an evolution of consciousness going on. And what does the baby, the young student, what does the 
growing human being need from the environment around them. Because that's what the, the people in these sheets around the child, they need to provide the kind of environment that's needed at every phase of development. Especially, especially the parents, the doctors and therapists, and the teachers. Yeah. This is a very important group that has to provide different different um, provisions for the child at each phase. What's the biggest thing about the baby? Oh. The head. The head. The head. Yeah. <laughs> so it starts in the head, and this is very important. All the development of the child is coming from the head down. Until we get to a certain place in a certain age, then it comes from up. Yeah. But these forces are working, but the forming forces are starting from the head. So these forces are building the body, and these forces are forming the body. Okay? So this head, and it's resting, isn't it? It can't, it can't move anything, really. It begins to jerk a little, and slowly it begins to be able to move the head. So these forces are now coming down, and the other forces are working up. So what did you, what did you find? How did, how would we put what, what's, what we see happening in the body? Until three, yeah? At a certain stage, they can raise their hands, and then later they can crawl. Okay, but before that, there's something very active. Their senses, their senses. Now, somebody asked about the eye and the 12 senses, and I'll explain this as we talk, especially about the first three years. So we know the 12 senses, we talked about it. Which senses are waking up here? Touch. Touch. Yeah. What else? I also Hearing. Hearing. Sight. Yeah, sight is very important. Smell. 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 Taste. So these are the middle senses, except for touch. And touch isn't really a sense. Touch, in a way, starts in the beginning and goes all the way until we die. We touch the world, yeah? And Rudolf Steiner says it's not a true sense. It's the, like the eye on one side and touch on the other. And the senses are happening in between the eye and touch. What do I mean touch isn't a, a true sense? Rudolf Steiner first spoke of ten true senses with touch at one extreme and the eye, the experience of, the, of your eye at the other extreme. Because a sense means that I have an experience in sensation and then I bring a judgment to it. So there's first a pure experience and then the soul has to bring a judgment to it. So even if that's very, very quick, if I put my hand on something hot, then I have to have the sensation, and then I, I judge, that's hot. That's my sense of warmth, not my sense of touch. My sense of warmth is telling me something's very hot. Now when something is extremely hot, we all have the experience, we all make the judgment quite quickly, hot. But you can see when, when the temperature is not very hot or very cold, then people make very different judgments. We've noticed that the Chinese love it when it's cool, when it's cold even. For us, it's too cold. When we get on the subway or go in a shop, it's like really cold. Because we don't have air conditioning like you have here in France. In America, they do, but not in Europe. In subway. In subway, in shops. Right. Yeah, so I might feel cold, and you don't feel cold, or you might even feel warm. So that's a subjective judgment we have to bring to a sense. So Steiner said with, with the real sense of touch, not the sense of warmth, with the sense of touch, there is an unconscious judgment already there that I'm being carried by the world. If we would all lose our sense of touch, of sitting in the chair or standing here, and all of a sudden it was gone, we would feel lost to the world. We would feel totally abandoned. But this sense of touch is very, very important for the child. Because the child, especially the mother holding the child, being held, and the quality of the warmth of that touch, the quality of love of that touch, gives the child a feeling 
that they can be on earth, they can, they can grow here, they can live here. So they know this immediately without having to make a judgment. It's already, you might say, an unconscious judgment of their life. Yeah? Whereas all these other senses, they slowly have to learn. They have to learn in this sensation to begin to make a judgment, to even see mama, to see papa. But slowly their, their senses are beginning to develop. So you can see with the little baby, as it grows up, it's, it's, it has quite quickly a capacity in the middle senses, but the lower senses and the upper senses, it, ha it, has, it has to learn very much to get into those senses. So for instance, the sense of life, it's, it's not differentiated for the little baby. The baby, Rudolf Sarnes said, a baby is all sense organs. The baby is like a baby sense organ. It's, they aren't separate, the different senses. Everything is one. So actually that's an area of consciousness. When the baby tastes something, it's a sensation throughout their whole body. It's the same as if they see a color. It's a sensation throughout their whole body. And they don't differentiate color from taste. So these senses, they learn to differentiate very quickly. But the lower senses, movement, yeah, balance, these are, will come later as they begin to move more and more and articulate their body. And these three higher senses of speech, thought, and the eye of the other, this is something they're going to come to around three, two and a half and three. That's a, the wonderful world where they really begin to live in to these senses. But only when they get here, seven, yeah? Here they learn all these senses, and here then they can fully integrate all the senses of, of movement, of vision, of hearing. All of their senses can begin to be integrated, and dif differentiated and integrated. And we'll talk about this in a minute, especially in behavior. So for, we're looking at the, the, um, the body, so the senses, and then someone said, the movement in the beginning, what is the movement like of the little child? It's chaotic, isn't it? And then they begin to experience again, again, they're on, and slowly, slowly, they develop movement. Now they begin to be able to roll over. And then eventually, the wonderful thing when they can sit up, yeah? and then once they can sit, what, what do they do? They grasp, yeah, here. We'll put that here. It's grasp. What do they do? Who? I don't know. One of our kids. They didn't learn. Usually, they learn to crawl, don't they? They can lay, huh? They can lay on their stomach, but some children don't crawl. They push themselves on their bottom. Then they, what age is this when they're crawling? One year? Yeah? Eight months? Okay, so you see this is, this is coming down, this is coming down from here, from the senses. They're moving their arms. Their legs are just kicking, they're not really, but the arms can be, they can begin to grasp with their hands, yeah? Yeah, and then, the most wonderful thing, they can start to, before they can, stand, yeah? And this is, this is really, only that even the, the, even the monkey doesn't really stand, yeah? But the human being stands. The arms become completely free. First the senses and then the arms. So this is a year? Yeah? One year? And then? And then? And how do they walk? How do they walk? And you think they're going to fall? They don't, yeah? They, they, they come from the from the stars. They come from the planets. They come from the moon. They have to learn to walk. Yeah, there's really a force here that's carrying them.
Okay, so then they walk. And then what? What do you what do they start doing? Talk. Yeah, they start to talk. Before they make sound, animals make sound. Yeah. But now they begin to articulate these sounds. Uh, I've talked about the speech with you, haven't I? About the consonant and the vowel. Did we talk about it? Speech isn't just expression. <gasps> it isn't just expression. Yeah? In the animal world you have expressions. Woo! Woo! Yeah? And you have you have like consonant, you have meeting something. coming deep from your own soul. Each, when I do any of those, you have an experience of my soul, don't you? And the baby starts making those sounds. What do we call baby, we call baby talk? Gibberish, yeah. But there's a lot of vowel. And then it has to learn because the, the, the teeth and the lips are not strong yet. And slowly it imitates what the parents are doing, the, word, the sounds the parents are making. So that's really its prime behavior. We'll talk about that in a minute. But so it's imitating. First it's finding, and then slowly it begins to talk. And it puts vowels and consonants together in different forms, tries this out, and then it imitates the parent. So here we're beginning to come into the higher senses. Now, this is something very important. Rudolf Steiner is the only one that talks about the human being having a sense for speech, a sense for thought, and a sense for the other eye. So the animal can do all of this, yeah? Much quicker and much better, much more art, uh, coordinated than any child. But only the human being is upright. And speaks. And then they begin to think. First with memory. And around two and a half, three, the child says, I. Before they might say the word I, I don't know in Chinese if the little child says the word I, but then they really have the experience, I. I am here in the world is there. Now, there's some modern research that's not very old, and they begin to found, find out that the human being, and animals, but especially the human being, has special neurons in their brain, which they call mirror neurons. They found this out, I think, in the 19, 1990s. They were doing some research with some monkeys, and they put, um, they put electrical wires in the monkey's brain, and also in their muscles, so that every time they would do a movement, they could hear where the sound goes in their brain. So if they would give them something and they would grasp it, there would be a click click going in their brain. They put, they put it in, found the particular place where the brain, they thought, told the hand to do something. So do you understand this? They were mapping the brain in relationship to the body movement. Yeah? And also the, the head, or the, any behavior, they would get also, um, a sound, because they even put it on a, a speaker, so they could hear the electrical click in the brain when any of these movements were done. And then the monkey was sitting there, not doing anything, and the researcher came in the room, and he had something to eat, like a cookie or something, and he ate the cookie. The monkey ate the cookie? No, the researcher. The monkey wasn't doing, wasn't moving. <coughs> And the monkey's brain went and the researcher said, he's not moving, but the brain is kicking. Yeah? 
So they started to do research and they found out that the brain in the place where the is connected to a movement, if they see the movement, the same activity goes on in the brain, but they don't move their own hand, but they move their brain when they, they have the impression on their brain of moving their hand when they see somebody else move the hand. And they've done a lot of research now, and now they know that when Lan Lan's speaking Chinese to you, you are listening, but you are in your brain, where your speech center is, you are making all the activity of the brain as if you were talking, but you're not talking, as you're listening to her. I'm not doing it because I don't understand Chinese. Are oh, you saying that the monkey was doing the movement that the cooker, cookie eater did? Yes. And they discovered a most amazing thing, that the human being, also the animal, is this, this imitation doesn't just mean they see something and they imitate it, they are already imitating it in their, as their brain is developing. And every time you're doing something, the child is also doing something inside themselves. And then they do it. So they first actually do it in their brain, and then their brain connects to their, um, to their uh, limbs, and they can actually do it. So this means the child is learning to speak the language of the parents before the child speaks. Yeah. The child is imitating the language in the brain, in their own internal world, before they're able to do it with their body. Okay, we'll, we'll continue uh, tomorrow morning because this is, a, this is a very important time. This is one of the most important things for the whole for the child's whole life these first 3 years